what is it, 1-800-GAMBLER? I'm going to actually have a genuine conversation because they'll probably ask me if I am a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm addicted. Problem gambling supply. Hi, is this, is this 1-800-GAMBLER? Problem gambling supply, how may I help you? Uh yeah, I just I just wanted to t uh talk to somebody. Oh yeah, if you think you have a problem, call one hundred gambler. Uh no, they answer the phone with an attitude and hang up on you. They don't give a f about you. Burger King. Burger King, really? This is 1-800-GAMBLER, you're posing as Burger King?! What?! These, 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 these gotta be fired! I'm calling back. Hi, who am I speaking with? A helpline specialist, how can I help you? Uh yeah, I, I would I would like some help, please. How may I help you? Um, just getting connected to someone who can help me with my gambling. Okay. Have you tried praying over it? Have I tried praying? Are you you're laughing? Oh my God! Drug addicts, homeless, plaguing San Francisco's downtown, miraculously disappear ahead of Biden Xi Jinping summit. So what you're telling me is there is a solution to homelessness. We just don't want to solve it. Now, yes, this story did happen a while back, but I am still confused as to how San Francisco was able to cure one of its major problems overnight, all for a political leader who hates our nation. Isn't that funny? That's that's got to be crazy. You won't even do that for people who like us. Like genuinely, where did these people go? I genuinely wouldn't be surprised that these homeless people and drug addicts were just thrown into a pocket dimension and forgotten about. Oh my God, this subreddit, are you serious? Estrogen as a recreational drug? Is this something that you can do? I say recreational as in for fun and not for transitioning, etc. For some reason, taking estrogen makes me feel so good. Does anyone take estrogen recreationally? What effects do you notice? Any good combos with it? Combos? Like doing other drugs with estrogen? Are you serious? What do you get out of that? The transformation? Do you like looking more femme? The only people who I could imagine getting a kick out of taking estrogen for fun are people who are into autogonophilia, which is a sexual fetish all about turning into the opposite gender. If it's not that, then I have no idea what this dude's on. I This is weird as hell. And of course, this behavior would be asked about and talked about on Reddit. And I'm glad that nobody upvoted this, but there are 12 comments. I am so curious what those 12 comments are. YouTuber Mr. Beast builds wells in Africa, but receives criticism for spotlighting failures of the Kenyan government. It's crazy that charity never goes unpunished. It's crazy how this man can never win. He goes to rural Kenya and drills a couple of wells for everyone in that village to use freely, and the Kenyan government was embarrassed. They were upset that they couldn't figure out a way to drill wells in their own nation, something that every nation and every culture has figured out since the beginning of time. And don't even get me started about the tweets saying that Mr. Beast was profiteering off of poverty and trying to go to Africa and be a white savior. That to me was incredibly funny because it seemed like everybody wanted Mr. Beast to just build wells and then leave, all right? No, 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 give this nation core infrastructure and then don't cover it, all right? Don't point out the fact that the Kenyan government did nothing about it. Don't use it as a way to spread awareness about water scarcity in Africa. Don't do that, no, 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 just build the well and shut up. So many eggs here. The cure for virgin incel losers. You are trans, you are a girl, you just need help. Estrogen is the only option. Spread trans propaganda, ruin your fertility, get smoother skin, no more body hair, no more being a boy. This is sick. This is sick behavior. These aren't eggs. These are people who are chronically alone and are desperate for connection, so much so that they're willing to change their bodies to be appealing to other people online. These aren't people struggling with gender dysphoria. These are people you're manipulating into taking drugs that they should not be taking for your sick enjoyment. And I wish I could tell you guys that this is the only time this has ever happened on Discord. This happens 
all the time there are so many discords dedicated to cracking eggs and turning people into femboys or trans women it is so sick and so perverse and to be honest the rabbit hole with this topic is vast and over the course of me covering this subreddit i've encountered multiple screenshots like this a lot of screenshots like this i'd love to cover this topic but i don't know if you guys are interested in something like this if you are let me know in the comments down below i'd love to cover this because somebody needs to talk about it it is so bad and so gross German man blinded and disfigured, defending girl at bar from Moroccan Muslim who was trying to lace her drink with a substance. In a single fateful night, Tony B, 30, saw his life forever altered on the eve of April 30th. He encountered an act of violence that left him disfigured and robbed of his eyesight. What started as an act of bravery to protect a girl from a violent Moroccan Muslim migrant led to a brutal attack that changed his life irreversibly. Oh my God, his eyes, Jesus. That is a level of bravery that I hardly encounter. I don't think anybody is willing to sacrifice their eyes for a stranger, let alone put themselves in any sort of remote danger. That is insane. It really makes you think if this guy wasn't here, if he didn't stop this dude, what unspeakable acts did this guy have planned for that woman that he was going to drug and take home? And the saddest thing about all of this is that stories like this are happening more and more and more in nations where crime rates were relatively low for decades. I'm reading stories like this from Sweden, Finland, Norway, and now Germany. What is going on? Six-year-old killed by his mother's boyfriend had been waterboarded, beaten like a pinata, hung from the bathroom door by his t-shirt, and left to die in their maggot-infested apartment. That is the boyfriend. Yes, he's wearing a wig during trial and looks incredibly unwashed and goblin-like. What is there to say about this story other than to be very, very careful about who you let into your house, especially if you have a child? I couldn't even remotely fathom how the mother feels. The guilt must be unbearable. It must be unmatched. I can't imagine inviting someone into my home and then losing my child as a result. I would be more than distraught. It's crazy how all we have is jail time, right? Jail time and execution. There are no other punishments out there that can be equitable to the way that this dude had treated this kid. All I'm saying is that we need to bring back that brazen bull, bro. I don't know why we got rid of that. We need that. Reading, writing, math requirements found to be harmful, particularly to students of color. Harmful? In what way? Last time I checked, mathematics and, I don't know, the great Gatsby wasn't out here beating up minorities. But with one Google search, it gets even more stupid. This article is talking about reading and math scores coming out of Portland, Oregon, and how they're really low with students of color. It's so bad that minority students are simply not graduating high school in Portland, Oregon. So you might be asking, what's their solution? To lower the grading standards for minority students. You see, there's now a two-tier grading system in Portland, Oregon for white students and for students of color. So yeah, black, Hispanic, and Asian kids are going to be graduating high school at higher rates, not because of some revolutionary teaching method, but because they're being pushed through high school instead of being left behind. Dallas retailers lock up items after shoplifting soars 73% in six months. I am truly of the opinion that you shouldn't lock up items, you should just close the store. Leave the neighborhood. That's the only way that you can discourage behavior like this. Because the people who are stealing, they might be homeless, but they're not stealing the, the toothpaste because they need it. They're stealing the toothpaste so they can sell it on the street. All you're doing by locking up the toothpaste, the deodorant, the sunscreen, the whatever, is ruining the experience, the customer experience for people who actually want to buy your products. I am of the opinion that you should just close the store, deprive the entire neighborhood of that resource so that the behavior can be discouraged. Because for whatever reason, the risk of jail time for this deplorable behavior has been diminished in every major city in the United States, regardless of what state that city resides in. This is Dallas, Texas. You would think that the police officers there would be a little bit more proactive at least in comparison to san francisco cops or portland cops but no it's all the same you can just steal it's an unfortunate reality that the only stores that can remain open and items remain unlocked can only remain in areas that are affluent or ethnically homogenous that sucks i wish that wasn't the case but it seems like that's the only option we're left with 
every day is another opportunity to force kids in public schools to be gay. Even in jest, this is a bad joke. If you want people to not consider public school teachers as indoctrinators, you probably shouldn't put this stuff out. There's enough people on this planet who genuinely believe that there's a lot of teachers out there encouraging their kids to be trans, gay, or whatever, and you publishing this on your Instagram is not helping quell that narrative. If anything, it's reinforcing it. And a lot of people in the Reddit comments with this post in particular were very confused as to whether or not this was genuine. And God forbid it is, because parents are vicious, especially when it comes to keeping their children as innocent as possible. Conversations about sexual orientation are important, but I don't think they're important for elementary school children, and that truly shouldn't be joked about. Like seriously lady, read the room, in what universe is this a reasonable and appropriate post to make as a school teacher? Your child should never be the only fully melanated child in any environment. Stop placing your black children in dangerous situations. It's really crazy how statements like this are reasonable to make online. I thought people got canceled for this, right? I thought people were, you know, consequenced for their racism online. Like for real, could you imagine someone getting away with saying, your child should never be the only white child in any environment. Stop placing your white children in dangerous situations. A lot of people would be upset about that because you're implying that these other children of other races are inherently dangerous and are going to harm your kid because they aren't the same race as your kid. It's crazy how everyone can identify that statement as racist, but not the former statement not Nikki's statement. Now, don't get me wrong. If you want to raise your child in an ethnically homogenous environment, whether that child be black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Jewish, by all means, do it. There are plenty of good benefits with primarily interacting with your own people. But the funny thing is, is that she's not doing that. You're placing your child in a room full of different races and different peoples and being upset about that. And then going out of your way to ascribe malice to these people because they don't look like your child, which is ironic because a lot of people would do the same with your kid. Unthinkable immoral act. Woman ordered to pay $375,000 for sabotaging boyfriend's musical career. When McGill student Eric Abramovitz won a scholarship to study with a prestigious LA professor, Jennifer Lee began a despicable scheme of fake emails to stop him. Yes, you are reading right, you're hearing right, you are thinking right. Eric was about to fly to LA and hang out with this professor. This was a very, very prestigious scholarship and he'd been working very hard to get it. And because he was moving to LA and really didn't have the ability to house her along with himself, Jennifer took the initiative to make sure Eric couldn't leave by going out of her way to send fake emails to the LA professor to prevent Eric from going. Now, how did this work? Jennifer went out of her way to pose as Eric in the emails and reject the scholarship on his behalf. She acted like him, so it seemed like Eric was saying, yeah, I don't wanna do this, also that he wouldn't leave her, also that they could just be together. Now she owes him $375,000 and she's single. In a matter of an evening, this woman ruined her relationship and financial life all at once. The Daily Mail article that I read didn't really go into detail of whether or not Eric was able to get the scholarship back. I hope that he's able to apply again, but you know how things go. Maybe this was just a missed opportunity, and it's not even your fault. It's the fault of your jealous, insecure girlfriend. Let's say Jeffrey Epstein wants to have what? And will pay $10 million. The money will go into a mutual fund that will pay out when she's 21. The girl agrees, as do both of her parents. Should this be allowed? And are you male or female? This is just trafficking, but more sophisticated. Here's $10 million. I'll put it in a trust fund for you to take out when you're 21 and let me do unspeakable things to your body and to your mind while you grow up, you know? You're a plaything for me because I just gave you $10 million. This hypothetical is moldy, disgusting, and disturbing. You're genuinely asking whether or not it's okay to pay for intimacy from a minor. You're implying and basically asking Twitter, is it okay to rent a 14 year old girl for $10 million? That's what you're asking. And of course you're asking that question because this is what you look like. You look haunting, bro. There is nothing behind those eyes. You're exactly the person I think to ask this hypothetical to everyone online. Chicago woman arrested for dismembering her 65 year old landlord's body after getting an eviction notice. The body of the landlord was found in her freezer. Sounds like self-defense to me. Could you just please put the phone down? This elderly woman was murdered and dismembered because one of her tenants didn't wanna pay money. And you think that's reasonable because politics? Is there any machine in these people's brains online, bro? Is there anything that just checks their statements? If your thoughts and beliefs and ideologies can fit a scenario in which murder is justified, you just might not be political. You're a f asshole who hides behind ideologies because you're too chicken shit to be a deplorable head honestly and authentically. If you really just don't care about people dying, you might as well just be honest about that. 
because all of this, it sounds like self-defense to me, is completely bitch made. For real, your edgy politics falls on deaf ears. Many people know that you're unwashed, unloved, and demonstrably undesirable. It came out recently that Rotten Tomatoes absolutely pays people to review particular movies positively. One of those movies being Cuties. It's so obvious that most people maligned and despised that film. Most people didn't even see it because the premise alone is disturbing and disgusting. But yet, critics loved it. Why they loved it? You can go onto the website and read it yourself. It's kind of sick how they manipulated this movie into making it seem like it's some sort of art film, like it's some sort of beautiful piece of French cinema and culture. It isn't. And the same thing happens to movies that they want to drop in ratings, like Memory and Sound of Freedom. The critics' ratings for them were completely fabricated and paid for. Rotten Tomatoes encourages their official critics to rate specific movies negatively, whilst rating others positively and I've always found it interesting that you can immediately know if a movie's good if all of the official ratings or official critics hate the film and it begs the question why films like memory and sound of freedom have to be maligned who is being threatened by those movies and why don't they want those stories told it really makes you think XQC reacts to Israeli airstrike that hits Gaza Tower after Hamas attack. I remember this particular stream. He was watching all different types of news coverage, you know, talking about this situation back in October. And a lot of his fans didn't vibe with it at all. Now, a lot of people are used to XQC reacting to all sorts of content on YouTube, but this stream literally occurred, like, I want to say two or three days after the event. And of course, during his streams, he was receiving donations and subs, and people, including myself, found that to be a little disturbing. You were making money off of this event as it was happening he was sharing his thoughts about it but he wasn't sharing anything new and it wasn't like he was covering anything new he was just watching really terrible news as it was unfolding and a lot of people felt that to be a little bit disrespectful or even seriously disrespectful let me know in the comments down below what you think if you're a fan of xqc if you're not what do you think about reaction content on twitch in general i'd love to know what you guys think because this is a sensitive topic and a lot of people have a lot of varying opinions on it Personally, would I do this? No. To make a reaction stream or reaction video to that event as it was happening would seem incredibly tone deaf and disrespectful. But hey, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm incredibly curious what you guys think. Anyone here vengeful? I love revenge. It makes me feel powerful. The worst thing I did was make a guy look like a racist, oh my god, online? I wrote a bunch of sexist and racist things under his name because he let me on. I sent him his own address anonymously and freaked out threatening to call the police. That's why you don't ever f with my heart. I'm loving and generous, but I can throw you under the bus in seconds if you hurt me. So somebody broke up with you and your first thought, your first thought was to frame somebody as a racist Whoa! and you think you're loving and generous? No, you're a powder keg. God forbid anybody date you or associate themselves with you. The moment you feel any sort of betrayal or slight against your person, you'll spend your time destroying their reputation with some of the worst character traits and behaviors that a human could have. And you consider yourself loving and generous. And it begs the question, how were you able to do this? Now, it's easy to frame somebody as racist, but it's really hard to frame somebody as a <laughs> What was your method that in your opinion seemed successful that you took in order to frame somebody as a Whoa! What the f did you do? What's up everybody? It's your boy Aileris aka Panda Daddy and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below and leave a like if you like the video. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing. And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so get these notifications every time. We're beginning the month with a channel favorite. I know a lot of you guys wanted to see r slash Noah get the boat, so, and I am here to provide. And as always, we gotta thank the Patreon supporters that make content like this possible. A big thank you to Convicted Poop Slinger, Libby131, Dawnbreaker Drake, Traffic Racer 124, YSG, Inferno, Fisherman, Tariq, The Blurred Star, Mr. Sandman, Iconic PFP, Mike, Sleepy Dragon, Power Lover, Loving Tate, Tron Destroy 23, Co Connor Purvis, S16, Infrared, My Golden Experience, James Tucker, BMX30, Cinnamon Stick, Scott, The Fake Musician, Samantha Belhart, Admin Fanneker, Bloody Hunter, Keely, Dundernass Hawk, Swiss Patreon user, and Noah, thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there's two links in the description, one of my merch store and one of my Patreon. Both funds go directly into the channel so I can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.